Remington Golden Bullet 22 long rifle, 40 grain solid point, copper washed uh, solid point. So that's my main test today is to test out that uh, 22 long rifle. And you see I have my 22 mag out here and I got some Remington Accu tip, three, 33 grains. I tested those recently, but I like to bring those out because I like to always have a comparison to see, you know, how what I'm testing compares to something else just to kind of, you know, it helps me to, to see whether I've got good performance or bad performance or how it stacks up to something a little bit better. So I recently tested this uh, Remington Golden Bolt in the 36 grain hollow point. It was the worst ammunition I'd ever seen in my life. I was getting really inconsistent velocities. I was getting like 500, 700, 800, 500, 400, getting a lot of duds. And I was thinking, you know, I wonder how the solid point will do. Maybe it'll do better. It doesn't, doesn't seem illogical that it really would do better, but I'm going to use my 4 inch Taurus TX22 to test the uh, 22 long rifle. It's actually 4.1 inch versus my 3 inch LCRX 22 Magnum. The reason why is because, you know, a 3 inch revolver really is the equivalent to a 4 inch semi automatic and overall size and barrel travel or gun travel, I should say, because you know, you're taking up the chamber here. So you're actually getting only about 3.1 inches of bullet travel in a new barrel. As we're here, we're getting three inches and a little bit extra. So I believe these are rated at your typical 1280 feet per second. I could be wrong on that. Or, but, you know, our Magnum rim fire is rated through rifle at 20 or 2000 feet per second. We're not going to get that in a handgun. And even though these are AccuTip hollow points, these will not expand at handgun velocities. That's kind of why I'm comparing it to the solid point here. Is because I want to see how you know non expanding a 22 mag compares to non expanding 22 long rifle. So we're gonna go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm gonna do my 10% clear ballistic test. We're just gonna go into plain clear ballistics, see what the best potential is of those cartridges and bullets. And after that, I'm gonna do more real world where I'm gonna put four layers of denim up on the front of this first three inch part here that represents our pector muscle. We really don't need denim because we're not really dealing with uh, uh, hollow points and whatnot but I like to keep it for consistency. And then after three inches here, we're gonna have a quarter inch medium density fiberboard to represent hitting ribs or sternum. And that sometimes provides some resistance that you might not see in regular plain clear ballistics test. And three inches for our pectoral muscle, you gotta remember clear ballistics is like half as dense as human flesh. So that's like an inch and a half pectoral muscle. And then after that, I'm gonna shoot out my steel to see what kind of practical accuracy I can get. So well, let's get started with this test. All right, first up, we have our 22 Magnum. It's rated at uh, 2,000 feet per second through a rifle. Let's see if we get through my three inch barrel revolver here. 1348. 1375. 1380. 1354. 1308. So pretty decent velocity. Now I looked at the box. It did say this was rated at uh, 1255 for our 22 long rifle uh, so let's see what we actually get here nine twenty three eight ninety eight eighty nine nine twenty six nine fifty three let me run one more I don't know. So actually, it is this right here is a lot more consistent thus far than the hollow point version. The hollow point version, it like maxed out at 800 feet per second in this, and that's a lighter bullet. And we're dropping down to like 800 or 500, 800. So I don't know if it's just that lot of ammo or what, but these seem to be a little bit more consistent. So let's hit our ballistics gel block and see what we get with these. All right, we're going to do just our best potential shot here. Plain clear ballistics. We're gonna start out with our 22 mag. Let's see what this gives us. A lot of smoke. Let's hit that with our 22 long rifle. Go take a look. All right, so honestly, not bad performance. This is, this is really what I'm finding that I'm looking for when we're talking 22 long rifle, something that's gonna penetrate adequately enough that's really not gonna expand, it might tumble. 
So we actually almost looks like there's more damage with the 22 long rifle, but I think overall it's about the same if y'all add it all up. So we were looking here at with our 22 magnums, we have a penetration right about 14 and a quarter inches, which is pretty good. You know, that's really good penetration. We don't have expansion. I didn't want to see expansion. And I think I'll just, I'm not even going to measure these probably unless I see uh, significant deformation. I'll just show them close up in a minute here. But what we have here with our 22 long rifle is 12 and a quarter inches. So not bad overall for our penetration. Now let's put on our denim and our MDF in there and see how they compare that way. All right, 22 Magnum through our denim and our MDF. Let's see what we get. kind of curved inward. Now let's hit it with our 22 long rifle. Go take a look. All right, so a little bit of difference there. Uh, with our uh, 22 Magnum here, we got a penetration of uh, about 11 and three quarters, but you know, that's adequate because we went through MDF, which lowers that a little bit. And it does look like we're having some oblong looking impact right there. You know, that high velocity, it kind of destabilizes once it hits something, it does that, which isn't bad. It's just gonna do more damage and not over penetrate. 22 long rifle went straight in. So. With our 22 long rifle, we have a penetration that's a little bit subpar of about 10 and a half inches. But overall, that's pretty average for 22 long rifle, and it doesn't look too bad to be honest. So let's hit our steel and see what kind of practical accuracy we can get with these. All right, here's a close up look at these bullets. There's really no deformation of that. That little uh, tip that was in that hollow point there fell out, but no expansive whatsoever. So it really is about the exact same overall length as that 40 grain solid being a hollow point even though it's lighter because it's not filled with lead so really we got similar results in a lot of respect just because of that so when we look at going through our mdf this is where things change up a little bit with this it looks like the mdf caused it the bullet to bend so it's bent to the side there uh, tip is still intact now with our 22 long rifle we had bullet deformation because it's a much softer lead However, I can tell by looking at this, this is a decent lead alloy. It's not like, it doesn't appear to be pure lead like I've seen in some bullets. It does look like it's a little bit harder. So even going through the MDF, it kept, kept that bullet stabilized enough to punch through it. And that's what we're really looking for. We're not looking for a deformation with the 22 long rifle immediately. Because if that happened, then it hit a rib, then it's going to slow down. It's not going to do much. But this right here, going through a rib simulation, it punched straight through. It wasn't tumbling or deforming until it hit that rib simulation. And then it deformed just a tiny amount. So honestly, that bullet design is a pretty good bullet design if I had to use a 22 long rifle for self-defense. So let's look at those up close. All right, I'm 10 yards from the target. Just going to pull up, see what kind of practical accuracy I can get. I'm 10 yards from the muzzle here. So pull up, we'll see how these 22 mags will shoot for me. Just kind of pop them off once I get a sight picture. All right, not bad. I think I'd be pretty well armed with that. Now let's see how I can get here with our 22 long rifle. Have to time it a little bit differently, but shoots fine. Out of ammo, so not a malfunction. It's running good. So I think these will actually do good from a little bit distance, from a little bit of dif distance. So let me back it up a little bit and see how they do for me. All right, 40 yards from the target, why not? I only have six of these uh, 22 mags left, but let's see where they hit for me. All right, let me save a couple of those if I wanna back up a little bit. I think I was hitting, it's really hard to tell because they move so fast. 22 long rifle, let's see what this does. All right, so they are impacting a little bit low. It looks like I didn't even check until after the fact. 
So they are impacting a little bit low. So if I miss some, I think I drop below it. So let me back up at 75 yards. Remember, it's just for fun, not training here and see how they hit for me. And I think that's one thing that is a little bit different about me or other rural people. You know, we grew up like that. We grew up with somebody being like, hey, can you see if you hit that Coke can uh, from uh, 700 yards? Yeah, let's try it. So not we're not in the city at shooting ranges and then all that so i got a couple rounds of this 22 mag left let's see if i can make any hits with this i swear i hit my camera protector plate that sounded weird i think they're hitting low let me aim just a little bit high i'm not sure there <laughs> that was a little weird so I'm going to have to aim probably uh, a little bit over the target or about the headshot area. I think I left my magazine back there, so I'll have to go back and get that briefly here. Those are accurate. Let me go get some more ammo. All right, I got my ammo and reloads, and I was aiming right at the head zone of that target when I made those first hits, so I'll just keep going there. Keep aiming there. pocket somewhere <laughs> all right i finished strong there and you know some of those misses i was kind of i was unintentionally bringing the sights down a little bit lower than right here to maybe here i started missing and then i brought it back up up to here so overall though what i'm going to say here is this uh, ammunition is absolutely nothing uh like the 36 grain hollow point i don't know if it's if by design that it's off that it's terrible and the 36 grain hollow point and somehow by design the 40 grain works better with that powder charge or or if it's just a lot of ammo discrepancy there uh, but i came into this test fully expecting to get the same results as i got with the hollow point version where it's just like dud after dud after dud but this stuff seems decent which is really interesting here and we look at that 22 magnum you know just like literally every ammo i shot out of that 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 revolver it always impacts really low um even at close range and i brought the sights or adjusted it to where they would hit and it's just significantly off uh, the only thing that seems to hit with right is maybe handgun ammo for that 22 magnum but it did really well on our ballistic test no doubt that 22 mag did really well but i'm gonna say for the amount of shootability this uh, 22 long rifle has and have a, a nice decent velocity, a nice heavy uh, 40 grain bullet that doesn't like tumble too much and it goes in straight and then starts tumbling. I'm gonna say overall, it's not a bad round of ammunition if I had to use something like this for self-defense. So not bad overall, very, very accurate. Seems very consistent. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you.